In this video, I am going to provide you with a two car garage framing and foundation and figured that uh, just if someone was going to build something like this, I wanted to give them a idea of what it might look like, some of the components and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to need will be a foundation footing and the garage slab is usually separate from the foundation a foundation size for something like this and again i'll give you some of the measurements i'm not going to give you a lot of measurements in the video it would take too long but i might make a separate set of plans and uh, detailed measurements of everything and put it up for sale. If that's something you'd be interested in, leave it in the comment area and I'll get started on that. So you will have footings and they're usually going to be 12 by 12. So this would be 12 inches and then 12 inches back. And you're going to have anchor bolts with a stem wall. Stem walls are usually six inches, five and a half inches. And, of course, the height would vary upon the slab here. So you can see here that the slab, which is poured afterwards. So I've seen people pour these all together, too, by the way. I don't want to say you can't pour this as one unit. But uh, it's real common to pour this separate. And um, usually it's sloping towards the front. And then, of course, any opening you're going to have will be... Uh, we'll need to have like a curb on it. So if we just let this this raised um, stem wall go all the way around, how would we get our cars in here? So you would use this same method for a door also. The wall framing with a header, usually something like this is a 2 by 12 um, This would vary in areas. I'm from Southern California. 2 by 12 for a 16-foot opening was common. And I believe they switched it to 2x14s. Um, so if, you, if you're worried about that, go with the 2x14 for the framing. Anchor bolts, they need to be spaced a minimum of 6 foot on center. And you need them in the corner. I think they're, it's, they got to be within 12 inches from each corner. Something like that. Again, you need to check with your local building department for information about that. Wall framing, standard 16 inches on center two top plates ceiling joists i'm using two by eight 20 foot long and they will need to be notched at the top for the roof rafters here to work out and i use two by eight you can use um two by fours actually four foot on center for garage ties but it's a big problem people want to store stuff up in the attic so if you're going to store something up there make sure you have they, you're using ceiling joist and not um, rafter ties. And I have plenty of videos on that also. Um, the wall of the roof framing, you're going to have a ridge. And I used 2x6, I believe, here with a 2x8 ridge. It will need to be notched at the end. And again, like I said, you can kind of look at the pictures and see here um, how to build it. The rafters. The ones on the end will be notched for the outlookers. Gable studs, 16 inches on center. I like to have one underneath the ridge going all the way down. If you're going to put a gable vent in, just put it off to the side. But if you want the gable vent to be in the center, I understand. Just frame accordingly. Gable vents allow air to go into the garage ceiling. And of course, you might need other vents in here also. Um, they are required, but I'm not going into the detail on that in this video. Fascia board with the 2x4 outlookers, 2x8 fascia board. And, of course, these blocks are shaped so that uh, if you have, I think this is a 4 and 12 roof pitch. So this would need to be the angle, which I believe is about 18 and a half degrees for the angle of that. Top of the fascia board, outlooker see here and again we can see we notch this down to a two by six so that it's not hanging down it's going to curve curve yeah i guess you won't be able to see that here hope it makes sense uh bottom of the framing with the fascia board plywood sheeting and that's it for that garage 
In this example, I wanted to turn the roof around. You can see it's sloping off to the front, just kind of throwing out another idea here. And the framing would be pretty much the same. This is a 20 foot by 20 foot garage, in case I didn't mention it. So turning the roof around would be almost the exact same framing. And the only problem I think you'd run into would be if you're going to use this for storage. If you're just going to use um, rafter ties this wouldn't be a problem but if you're going to store stuff up here you can put some weight on top of these floor joists or ceiling joists whatever you want to call them then um, the garage door header might need to be a little larger so it might need to be a 4 by 16 or even a 6 by 12 6 by 14 so just thought I would throw that out there if you do do something like this and you leave this as a 4 by 12 and you store a bunch of stuff up here there's a good chance that over time you will have a sag in this. So I would say do some planning in advance. If you are going to store stuff up there, make sure you beef it up for that. And remember these, I, these, uh, this example, both these examples are just examples. They might not meet your local building codes. And I know a lot of people build these uh, or watch my videos in other countries. That would apply to them also. So you might not be able to even do something like this. So keep in mind these ideas along with um, some of the ideas of my other videos might not work for everyone all over the world or in your area.